Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This is one of our make it with tutorials and it's a little project that you can make with existing template sets. So the templates that we're using for this project is the Versatangle and our trio of spooks. And what you're gonna be able to make with this is something that's really quite fun. It's a great little project. I'll quickly just run through a few tools and equipment and then we'll hop straight in uh, to make the project. I will be using my pocket scale. I will be using my three favorite needles, which is my 40 spiral, my 38 spiral and my 36 star. I've got my multi handle and my multi punch. I will of course be using my flat mat and felt topper and that of course is on my foam pad. The colours of wool that we're going to be using to make this project will ultimately depend what colour you want to do the project. This is so diverse and wide ranging that you really can do this any colour for lots of different situations. So the weights and measures for all of these are slightly different to the standard template weights and measures. For the spooks, uh, when we make the spooks, I'm just going to refer you back to the spook video and I will pop a little link somewhere for that that you can access that. And that's going to quickly take you through how to actually fill these templates. The weights and measures that I'm going to be using for these three templates are one gram to 1.5 grams, you know, give or take a pinch. And the Versatangle our sort of standard weight of, of wool that we say to use in the Versatangle is about 2.5. For this particular project, we're going to be using 3.5. So I will, as I said, I will pop a link up for um, the spook video so you can hop over and check that out for filling that. I'm going to very basically quickly run through how to fill the Versatangle. And then uh, it's that all important assembly so that we get that great finished project. So that's all the tools and equipment. We're going to hop straight in and start making our fab little spooky trees. I've got some of the trees already made and I do not have a big enough camera angle for this. This is the uh, tree set that we made originally for the Halloween um, event and we, we, they don't really have an exact name. I, I call them spooky trees or drippy trees, but either whatever you call them, they're, they're, at, they're such a fun thing to make. Obviously, I've made three trees and I've drilled out a little log base. Um, to make this project, I don't think I mentioned it, you're also going to need um, a bamboo skewer for um, creating that really nice sort of elegant thin tree trunk. So the colours that we've used here are willow and evergreen. And for the festive season, we decided to make some sort of candy cane coloured ones. It may be easier if I pop a picture up on the screen um, to show these. And as you can see, the candy cane one has these uh, corresponding beads. And these are the Ponsettia beads, which are four mil. Uh, seed bead and obviously we've done them in white for the red sections. So there's two variations on the trees. What I'm going to be doing in this video and I'm going to be showing you we're going to do this nice ombre set and this is the glacier ombre that we have on the website. Now the ombre is only available throughout the months of November and December and then for our Make It With event which we usually have in the middle of the year. So I'm going to show you, I've got some more to make up here. I think this is the, the shimmer as well, this is the ombre shimmer. You can perhaps see on the camera it's got that sort of sparkliness to it. So what you're going to need for making your tree is it all starts out with a Versatangle base. And for that, I've weighed out my 3.5 grams of whatever color wall that you're gonna be making your tree with. So obviously, I mean, the green ones, um, they've got a green uh, core. So decide what color 
um, would be best for your project and weigh yourself out 3.5 grams. The way that we fill the VersaTangle um, is like most of the templates, we get the edge in and then we backfill to the middle. I know it can be tempting to sort of stuff everything in um, and try and work out from there, but it really will save you um, just by putting the edges in first. And I'm going to do that by just grabbing myself out a long piece. I'm grabbing my lightest needle and I'm just going to run it down the inside of the template end to end like so and then all of this as you can see I left some of it sort of overhanging run my, tem my needle down the template and then just a nice vertical needle just to bring all of that into the template now you may not have a long piece you may have little tufts and that's also fine pop down your piece overlap the template run your needle along and then bring the rest of the fibre just inside that template wall but keep it nice and frizzy particularly when you're dealing with tufts because you want the last bit of, of that tuft to overlap with the first bit of this one so again just run it around and bring that in and you will find that 3.5 grams is really quite full there's another bit pop that down into there and what we're looking for is just a nice sort of even covering in the template lots of overlap so we get a good join between the sections of fiber that we're putting down there so I've still got all of this to go so I'm going to go round again and I'm also bringing the fibers into the middle now as well and if you start getting to the point where your template really is quite full and fluffy you can grab a multi punch and use the bouncing off the mat technique so as soon as you feel the denseness of that flat mat just pull back up nice and light all over because all we're trying to do is just get a little bit of these fibers compacted down but we want to keep them really loose little bit and then again a little bit more on that side of the edge and we're, we're not really worried about having really crisp edges um, because to make the core we're actually going to roll this together and then I'm going to get that bit out of the way lay this bit down there there we go that's the 3.5 grams sort of loosely in the template I'm going to grab my 38 spiral now so I'm just going to go up a needle and again just jumping about a little bit all over the place at the moment just to sort of put a few fibers down here and there And again, you know, I'm not driving into my mat. We don't want this stuck to the mat. And there we go. So that's starting to compact down. So I'm going to just very lightly take my template off and tickle the project off the mat. And you can see that that's a lot of fibre there. 
that's okay. Stuff it back in. Run around those edges, get all of these fibres back in and then we'll compact down a little bit more. The focus of firming up is going to be mainly in the centre. Down. I'm going to come in with my multi punch again and just go around to the middle. You know, it's it's springing out of the template at the moment, but that's okay. I'm just going to felt it down a little firmer in the middle. Stuff it back in the template. Hold it in place, and then this will really now start compacting down. And start holding its shape but again I'm not felting these edges sharp I want this loose fiber on the edge because having that frizz is really going to make it a lot easier for it to um, roll up and felt to itself and that'll give us a good strong call for our tree There we go. I'm going to bring in my multi needle and my multi handle. Little light stabs, letting the needle do the work. Or in this case, needles. <laughs> and just firming it up. And you want to get this reasonably firm. Like I said, we're just we're leaving those edges frizzy. Or the, the side edges. Yeah. That's starting to come together now. So keep going over your triangle and then give it a wiggle yeah you can turn it over felt back the other way I'm starting to firm up quite nicely now There we go. So I'm going to leave it there for camera purposes. Go over it a little bit more. You know, you really want it holding its shape. But again, just keep these two long edges a little bit looser than the rest. There we go. And this doesn't have to be pretty because this is going to be... Um, in the middle. If you want to uh, really compact this down quite quickly, then grab yourself your multi punch, take it out the template, and really knock the stuffing out of it. So it's a you know huge driving motion, and you can see that it flattens it really quite quite quickly. But what that also does is that does distort it. So just pop it back into the template and just make sure it hasn't gone too far off. There we go. Like I said, this core doesn't need to be pretty, but it does need to be quite um, sort of quite sturdy and quite firm because this is what we're going to build the rest of the tree on. So there's our triangle, our versatangle. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to roll it up. And the first part, I'm going to bring this over, grab my 38 spiral and just felt along that line. And I am driving out to the other side. And this I find just helps hold it in place. There we go, keep going.
all the way through and then bring your other side back and felt down through and this top part again we're just going to bring that over and work it into a nice point and it'll be a little bit fiddly there we've got our cone so I'm just going to roll it a little bit just help even out those fibres I'm going to come to the bottom and sort this out yeah. just get a nice sort of solid base now you can carry on and sort of firm this up a little bit more It's very, very similar to the technique that we used for um, making the carrots and the icicles. So you want a nice, quite firm base to attach um, your sort of spook tree bits to. And the whole thing is probably about you know 12 centimeters like that so three and a half grams 12 centimeters and felted quite firmly like so okay so that's our tree core done um as i mentioned earlier i'll pop up a link to the spooks template tutorial it's a very quick little tutorial just about filling that particular template set and what we'll do now is I will grab the spooks that I have made uh, to go on this core. So the arrangement for making the tree is you have your three spooks. This is the bottom one. This is the middle one. And this is the top one. So top, middle and bottom. And you're going to need to make two of each of those spooks so two tops two middles and two bottoms and let me just arrange these so you can see and you can absolutely use these on a 2d picture as well um, I like to correspond the colours, I'll coordinate the colours, you could obviously do them all uh, the same. However, we're going to start with the bottom and what you do is you line it up so that the bottom spook just sort of overhangs the bottom of your tree and light needle sort of felt each side in place and these should be about um, sort of halfway round now if you find that you need to make your versatangle a little bit bigger um, then you can you know grab another gram of wool put that in another versatangle and wrap that around this core you can make you can keep wrapping versatangles around and around and around to make it bigger and bigger and bigger and you can do three or maybe even four spooks around and then three spooks and then two spooks. you know this is entirely your vision of the project this is the simplest um way of doing it and you want to sort of overlap to pull that down a little bit and there and there and then take the other one and overlap the last one
like that. So just a few light stabs just to hold it in place. Now if you want to get rid of this line, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can grab a slightly sturdier needle, scratch up the fibres on that top layer and really frizz them out. And then very lightly felt all over just using that first barb and you'll find that that will just blend out that line. I'll do it on the close-up camera for you as well. Turn that round. So there's that line. Just really scratch up and frizz up the fibres on that end. And then felt down lightly into place and that line will vanish. There we go. So that's our first layer. Now we get our second layer. And go in uh, the gap. So there's the, the first spokes were put on that way. So turn it 90 degrees and lay down the next one. So you cover that sort of gap there with the bottom most part. And again, light needle and I'm just going to attach it all the way up that side bring it over and attach it all the way down that side. Very, very lightly because if you decide, oh, it's in the wrong place, you can just pull it off. So a bit of a driving motion. We're aiming to sort of attach this so we can be a little more aggressive with it. There we go, there's that one. And again on the other side, just those tacking stabs, getting it down into place. The other way that you can join these lines um, is by adding uh, an extra little pinch of wool, which I don't have to hand, so I'm going to do the... Um, scratchy blendy thing <laughs> Let me get my 36 star it's a bit more up to the task I think there we go there. so that's our second layer down you can see already how lovely that's looking and I don't know if the camera is picking up uh, the shimmer in this. The Glacier Shimmer was uh, a new launch for Christmas 2020. And here's our, our next one. So just go and have a look where you want to place that. That looks nice. And I tend to not felt these bits down um, because then you can get that sort of standoff that gives you a bit more dimension. So let me, light needle, tacking stab. And then this one I'm going to be going across and just tacking down that head as well. I want these bits to point down a little more so I'm going to manipulate them. Come across the other side, exactly the same thing. And we really do find that the, the spooks give this really nice sort of... Um, almost like snow-capped effect. There, that's that one down. 
grab the last one. And again, I'm just going to overlap a little bit. Slightly get it tacked down. Yeah, we can sort out um, a bit more of an arrangement after. There. And then you just want to close this up. Again, we're going to do that sort of frizzing out thing. Nope needs to be wrapped a bit tighter. There we go. I grab my 38 spiral, my 40 is just not pinning this down enough. There, just scratch up the surface and get it tacked down. So you can see how this is coming together now. It gives that really lovely layered all right so i'm really going to felt this quite firmly up here now i'm happy with the placement i'm going to get it felted down and then i'm going to sort out frizzing up those edges a little bit more down there that's looking good yeah, and if you've got a slightly larger gap, you can um, add, you know, add in a little bit more wool. I'm just going to use what I've got here. And we've got this little open bit at the top as well and to deal with that. I'm going to my, my thickest needle for scratching up these sides because obviously it's a it's a more robust needle. Um, if you use your fine needles, you'll possibly break your tips. Um, there, almost getting there. Scratch all that up. And then felt it down. I'm not going to spend too much time on this here right now, but tidy all that up. And then I'm going to turn this bit at the top, felt it really, really well to each other, and make that really nice point. And I'm having to use quite a driving technique. Let's give it a little bit of a roll. Uh, still needs a little bit of work at the top there. I think possibly I felted the, the spooks a little bit too firm. But that's okay. I would actually just wrap a little bit more wool maybe around the top there to sort this out. But that will suffice for now. You get the idea. And you can make these, obviously, you know, any colour that you want. So I'm going to leave it there. All that's left to do now is to um, put that stick in. And, you know, we can, you, I said you can put beads on it, you can put the iridescent beads on it. You can even, uh, dare I say it, spray it with some glitter. <laughs> I wouldn't spray it with glitter. <laughs> but those of you who know me know that I don't do glitter. So the uh, shimmer um, wool is about the, uh, the the glitteriest I get at the moment. So I'm just going to go and quickly grab the stick. So here's our finished tree and my stick. <laughs> which <laughs> I always leave something out. And like a Muppet, I left it right for the other side of the room as well. <laughs> it took me ages to find it. Oh dear. So, 
I'll stick in our tree and your stick may be sharp enough um, but all you do is just give it a twiddle and guide it up the middle of your tree until you are pretty much at the top you don't want to come right out the top then whatever type of base that you've prepared um, I generally find that these bamboo skewers uh, work quite nicely with a four mil drill bit and I've just drilled out a little trio of holes there staggering the tree heights um, just I'm going to make this one quite short cut it a little bit longer than you think oh cripes <laughs> that shot off Cut it a little bit further than you think you need it. Let me pop that out of the way. And then pop it down in your hole there. And I mean adjust I'll adjust the uh, close-up cam a little bit. And there you can see that those trees are stuck. There we go. I'll just I'll pop up a picture. It'll be easier to see with the cameras. So that's basically your sort of little tree ensemble. And you can do all kinds of things. You can add it. You can make it look slightly more realistic by going with some greens. He said we did the candy cane coloured ones. And now we've got these sort of snow-capped ombre trees in the glacier shimmer. There's so, so many things that you could do with these. Uh, you can make them, you know, shocking pink and um, all sorts. So, and various bases as well. That's the tree, uh, our sort of our, our little trio of trees project. And uh, as I mentioned, it's using the trio of spooks and the Versatangle template. Um, if you aren't already, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do give the video a little like, hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that bell icon, that'll notify you when we upload new videos. We do have a Facebook group, which is uh, utterly brilliant. So if you fancy coming along and having a chat with us on Facebook, we all share our makes. And it's a really nice, beautiful, fluffy community that we've got in our group. So that's it from me for this make it with video for the trio of trees. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I wish you all a very crafty day.